Hey friends, uh, finally back at it, and today we are going to try to hook up this touch up, touch off plate here. Um, I think this is going to help me solve some of the problems that I've been having. Um, still some stuff to figure out. Definitely not doing something like that. Uh, I think it might be an AutoCAD, but uh, hopefully today, after getting this set up, we will be able to get back to making some pet badges. So I. Uh, as I said in the other video, now have the mill on the desktop, which I think is eventually going to, or I think it's going to work out a little bit better for us. And, uh, I don't know, I mean, I think eventually I want to build some sort of Kevlar shell around this thing, um, and then hook up some sort of cooling system to it, so maybe that'll be a future video. Um, I also need to make a better box, this thing, it's not very good. Um, so, I'm going to be cracking this open in a second. And from what I've seen on the internet, it's pretty straightforward. You basically just take uh, take these two, um, actually one of them, into an empty slot on the parallel or on the, on the controller board, and then the other one just is a ground. So I'll probably ground it inside the box. And then uh, you pretty much connect this part, a little alligator clip, to your end mill. Then this just sits on the bottom, and then when the end mill hits it, it sends a signal back to the controller. Uh, so that's the gist. Let's see if we can get it hooked up and check back in with you in a second once I have the box open. Alright, so I got the uh, controller box down, got some tools, looks like a screwdriver, and I need to strip the wire here off of the touch plate. Then, I think I'm going to go into input 11 on this, uh, it's a Kelling 4030 board. I believe that's what it is anyway. Yeah. And they're still working on my deck, so you're probably going to hear grinding. I think I'm actually going to have to, so I need to go to ground somewhere. I think I'm just going to go into... Um, the left side of the, of the board there. This says ground.
it's in there. So we're on uh, terminal 11 there. Alright, so, I mean, I think that should be, should be set up. Cool. I'm pausing and then uh, I'll show you how to set it up in a Linux CNC. Uh, step conf open and um, I'm going to set pin 11. Hmm, what should I set it to? Let's see. Huh. Jeez. Actually, there's. I don't see anything that. Probe in. Phase. Limit. Nope. Uh, Alright, so I guess I'm going to. I mean, probe in sounds. Good, I guess. Uh, I need to. I'm going to have to look this up. Be back in a second. Alright, so after Googling, I uh, ran across a YouTube video. This guy, Rob Schuster, um, and he is using ProBin. So I'm just going to do ProBin. He has his inverted. Uh, I guess I could try inverting it first, see what happens. Um, not sure why amplifier is enabled here. Don't need that. Not using that. So I just opened a configuration that I had going already. I'm going to include this because he did, and I think he includes some like code that you can use to actually um, make yourself a GUI for controlling this thing or having it be able to somehow interact with it. Okay, forward. All this is should be the same. I'm not going to touch any of that. Done. Save it. Yes. What's it going to be doing? So the idea is to be able to connect this here. And then when the uh, tool touches the plate, then send the signal back. So here back. I'm going to start up the Linux CNC. So I, uh, according to the video, you can go to. If you have the, you've added HAL, you go to HAL meter, and then you go to signals, and then have this little guy, and then um, probe in. So right now mine's saying true, and when I come over here and I touch, I would expect that that changes to false or something. Um, I don't know, something's something wrong so I need to go back in to the box and see what I can do or figure this out. I'm thinking maybe so there was a five volt um, input next to the pin so I don't have anything going in there into there so I don't know maybe try a like uh, jumping one of the other five volts into there and power the input I guess not quite sure. So I'm going to try that too. Alright, so uh, I've now rewired the ground. So instead of coming into 17 ground, I'm basically tying into the e stop ground. And I had to reconfigure the breadboard a tiny bit there so that I don't actually ground from the resistor. So now I'm just grounding directly to the, the ground. Sorry for the noise too. They're right beside the garage door. Right on the deck. Um, I also sort of daisy chain. If you can see, can see right there. But basically, at, from the five volt of ten, I daisy chained over to the five volt of eleven. Um, hopefully that's focusing. Um, but now we'll give it a shot again. See what happens. All right. So this time 
I, uh, so I still have it sort of, um, piggybacking off of the 5 volt of 10. This time I went into the ground of 1 and then into the breadboard. So, uh, let's see if that works. Also, remove that other ground there. Alright, this time I, uh, redid the ground. after uh, about an hour of fiddling around, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half. Anyway, I have it working, so, so when you just touch, you see on the hell meter, that's what you want. I checked it with the continuity t test um, between the two, and I'm not getting anything, so as you can see, it's working here. Pretty basic. I don't know why I didn't think about this first. Um, it took some browsing, and then I finally saw some schematic where I hooked up to the C10 board here. So this is the C10 breaker board. Um, so I basically have the ground going into 11. So the ground is going to the touch plate, and then the um, the red wire to the probe is actually going into the 5 volt. Um, slide next to it and then I don't even need to mess with all that but whatever actually made it dirtier but anyway it, it works I'm excited um, so you need to make sure your controller is actually on before you test too so I ended up uh, searching C10 breakout touch plate and I ran across this little schematic and uh, that ended up working pretty well. And that's essentially what I ended up doing. Um, but I did want to say that uh, Rob Schuster's video, oh, not that one. This guy, his video is pretty awesome. And I went ahead and installed some of the um, the how configuration uh, GUIs that he has. So definitely recommend if you're using uh, Linux CNC to install that. And he tells you how to do it and everything. But uh, I'll leave a link to this below my video so you can get to it. So one thing I realized after playing around is that uh, you're going to need to edit the touchplate.ngc file. Um, basically you want to change this point eighteen here. Actually. I guess he changed it. Um, anyway, point 0.1 up plus point zero 0.08, which is the thickness of the plate. So essentially, you want to put point zero. You want to add your plate to point 0.1, your plate thickness to point 0.1. So mine is point 0.76. So I'll be adding that. All right. So I figured I, uh, I fi figured I'd show you what you want to happen. So. The probe connected to the uh, end mill here, and then inside of a Linux CNC, hit the Z touch plate button. That you get, uh, set up your configuration files right based on the Rob Schuster method. Um, and then I've, I've homed XY, X and Y, um, and now I'm going to hit the Z touch plate. Actually, I might move down. You want to move a little closer because the, the code only has it going down so far. Um, and if it doesn't hit anything, then it'll register it didn't hit. So 
continue after you remove this otherwise it'll jab into it which won't be good so now essentially what's going to happen is it should go to the absolute zero which is the uh, the amount um, minus the actual touch plate so cool seemed like it worked good deal now we can make some stuff